Do you remember Nikola Milankovic? You probably do. We're linked to him loads last summer. Anyway, reports today suggest we've got a gentleman's agreement in place to sign him this coming summer transfer window. But we also won't be signing anyone from Ukraine or Russia. They've got their special transfer window at the minute, but West Ham will not be signing anybody. All that coming up in the West Ham transfer rumour show. I've got my pink boot, the sun's shining, still no ice cream van, but don't worry, I know you're thinking another one, Gio. It's international break, all right, but I promise you, this is the last one. Tomorrow, we've got a tier list video. Monday, we've got the fake transfer rumour story. And on Tuesday, hopefully, if all goes well, we've got quite a big interview for the channel. But let's get straight into the rumours, starting with Nikola Milenkovic. If we rewind to last summer, I was convinced we were getting him. I was convinced that was David Moyes' number one target for a centre-back. And we were linked to him loads right up until Kurt Zuma signed for West Ham. And at the same time, roughly, Milankovic signed a new contract at Fiorentina. Now, the reports in Italy is a little bit different to the reports in England. We'll deal with the Italian ones first because you'd imagine Bears are a little bit more legit, wouldn't you? Given that he plays for Fiorentina. Their report suggests that he's gotten a gentleman's agreement with Fiorentina that he can leave this summer for as little as 12 million. Now, last summer when he signed a contract, it was only a one-year extension. And the reason for that was that Fiorentina could sell him this summer and get a bit of money for him. And he was, he was going to be allowed to go for just 12 million. So he's only got a little over a year left on his contract already, despite the new one last year. But the reports in England today suggest that it's actually West Ham that's got a gentleman's agreement with Milankovic. And David Moyes is going to make his move again this summer to try and get him in. 24 years of age, left-sided centre-back. Now, I don't believe the reports that there's anything agreed between us and the player or anything like that. It might be between Milankovic and Fiorentina. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I'm having a scooby. But in regards to us having agreed to sign him, I don't believe that at all. However, what I would believe is that West Ham are very aware of him, very aware of his situation. So if that was true, I'd imagine that Moyes has got knowledge of it. The left-sided centre-back thing seems quite prominent because there's a lot of sort of rumours going around as to what David Moyes is looking for ahead of the summer. We've all heard, heard haven't we? The striker, the left-back, the left-sided centre-back and a centre midfielder, which we'll get on to in a minute. So could Milankovic be back on the radar? We'll have to wait and see. One thing's for sure, the rumours are certainly back in the newspapers. Now, as for the centre midfield thing, we've been linked to Calvin Phillips a lot in the last week or so. He's been linked to Aston Villa as well. And the, the reports have gone one step further. Rather than just saying West Ham want Calvin Phillips, the reports are now going one step further, saying that David Moyes wants a really high standard centre midfielder to come in to not replace Declan Rice or Thomas Suchek, but to play alongside Rice and Suchek. And it's believed that Calvin Phillips is his number one target at the minute in order to do that role. Now, I'm not convinced on it. I'm not convinced that the, the three would work. I know Phillips and Rice works for England, but I think when you put Jordan Henderson in there with them two, I think England lose a little bit. I think they almost need somebody a bit more creative in there. I mean, I think Phillips, Rice and Bellingham, for example, is a, really, a much better centre midfield trio than having Henderson in there with him. But that three at West Ham, I think individually they'd be great players. I'd imagine it's so that Thomas Suchek can get further forward. But one thing that sort of backs this report up a little bit, in my opinion, is the way that we've been playing recently. I feel, my personal opinion, is that Rice has been more of a defensive midfielder in the last, I don't know, five games maybe or something like that. The last four or five games, certainly both games against Sevilla, Tottenham, Liverpool, the Wolves, um, the Declan Rice, is, Villa as well. Rice has just been a bit more restricted. Lanzini's dropped in a little bit deeper at times to play alongside Suchek. And they've been like a three, a bit like how, on paper, obviously, on paper, how Man City and Liverpool line up with a defence midfielder and two sort of number six and number eights there. It's just how Moyes wants to go forward. Obviously, we've got Lanzini at the moment. But if you were to take Lanzini out of the team, we don't really have a replacement. Of course, we can put Fernals in there. But we know Moyes likes using finales further forward up the pitch because he puts in the work rate, he tracks the fullbacks and stuff. So does is Moyes looking for a centre midfielder to play alongside Weiss and Suchek when Lanzini is not available? Possibly. I'm just not convinced Calvin Phillips would be that player. And like I said in the previous charge for my show, I'd have concerns over the budget. I don't believe we're going to have loads and loads of money to spend. I don't believe we're going to have over 100 million bar player sales or anything. So to spend... You know, 60 million maybe on Calvin Phillips, it doesn't leave a lot left in the kitty to go and get that striker, which we're crying out for. 
And then let's just say you spend 40 million on a striker. Have we got any money left for a left back and a centre back? I'm not convinced we would. So it'll be interesting to see how we break down the budget going forward into this summer. Now we've got a few more rumours including why we won't sign anybody from Ukraine or Russia. And you can keep up to date with all this news on the OneFootball app. The One Football app is sponsoring this video links in the description and they're paying comments and it's the best way of keeping up to date with absolutely everything at your club got international break at the minute so when you download it ask for your favorite team also ask if there's any countries you wish to follow so whether it's england wales if you're welsh and watching this you're having a good time at the minute aren't you hopefully facing scotland in the final we'll have to wait and see um, it doesn't matter what nationality you are, you get downloaded, you can follow your country as well and everything that's going on, especially at the minute, like I said, with the international break, we've got some World Cup playoffs happening, big, big games, same with over in um, the African side of the World Cup qualifiers at the minute, a big win for Egypt against Senegal, um, so one of those two are going to the World Cup, the other one isn't, the two African nations finalists are facing off in the playoffs for, for the World Cup, which is interesting at a minute. But like I said, links in the description and the pinned comments. It's completely free. Get it downloaded. Keep up to date. Bish bash bosh. Now, for the Ukraine and Russia thing, we know, everybody knows, that there's a window. Um, when is it? The 7th of April? I think it's 7th of April. That's the last day you can sign anybody from Ukraine or Russia. That's foreign players only. So they're allowed. FIFA and UEFA made it that foreign players at a Ukrainian or Russian club are free to leave basically on loan they've got to return to those clubs on the 1st of July so we, we know some players David Neres um, obviously our, our former player ourselves Balwena he's over there he's free to leave and go get a new club for the remainder of the season however Burnley have been trying to sign Victor Moses and another former hammer but the Premier League have blocked it the Premier League have taken the stance that no club will be allowed to sign any player from a Ukrainian or Russian club and register them to their squad now um, the reason for that is, I know, I know, some people are going to laugh at this, but they, they don't, they don't, they don't think it's fair play. It's for the integrity of the competition, the sporting competition of the Premier League. They don't think any, it's out with the transfer window, so no Premier League club is allowed. What's interesting though, is technically, West Ham could sign someone like Victor Moses. We just can't register him in the Premier League squad. We can still sign him, but we can register him in the, the Europa League squad and use them against Lyon if we wanted to. It's a bit mad, isn't it? So there's another couple of countries that have taken this stance, not just the Premier League. I know the Italians have done it as well. However, the French still haven't, and Lyon are still in negotiations with David Neres. So when we play Lyon, they may have at least one player that they've used um, out this transfer market from Russia and Ukraine. But West Ham, as well as any other 19 Premier League clubs, we will not be allowed to sign any and register them in the Premier League squad. Now back to the transfer rumours. A couple of championship players now. We've got Lewis Potter of Hull and Brennan Johnson of Nottingham Forest. Been linked to both quite a lot. Been linked to both a lot in the past. Slightly different players but also very identical players. Two players of huge potential, huge importance to their team. Lewis Potter is essentially keeping Hull up a little bit. Nine goals to his name. He's a fantastic player. I've seen quite a bit of both of these players, actually, which is, I say, quite rare. I don't mind championship football. I'll try and watch as much as I can. But when it collides with Premier League football, it's a bit difficult. I'll, I'll always pick the Premier League football. Snob, I am. But let's start with Lu I, I prefer, I'll be clear, I prefer Johnson to Potter. But Potter plays on the left of, of, of Hull's attack. A bit, he's like the opposite of Jared Bowen, essentially. Right-footed, players on the left, nine goals this season for them, 20 years old. And when I have watched Hull, which isn't as much as Nottingham Forest, he, he's looked good. He, he looks like the best player on the pitch. Um, they've got another player that stands out to me. I think his name's Greaves. Whenever I watch them, those two are the best players. Would I like to see Lewis Potter? I'd like to see him or Johnson. I would. I would like to see one of them. Not both. I think... Johnson's more likely to make it. Now, there is contrasting reports here as to how much he's going to cost. The, the reports that I'm talking, I'm referring to here have said around £12 million. However, Hull City made it clear in January he's £20 million. He's still got over a year to go on his contract. Hull have got an extra year on top of that as an option, a bit like we do with Equimise. So he's still got over two years, technically, on his contract. So they're not in any pressure to sell him. So Hull named their price in January at £20 million. You may get him for a little bit less, but I don't think it'll be too much less. But what I will say, I'm not as excited about him as I was about Jared Bowen when we sighted Bowen. Bowen did have a couple of years on him though. However, 
I'll be honest. I'm not that confident he would step up to West Ham's level like that. I think there's a le- I think there's a level in between a lower Premier League club kind of thing, and give him another year at Hull, and when he he might look a little bit better. I'm not that confident he would come in and start straight away from West Ham. I think we'd have to be patient with Lewis Potter, but Brendan Johnson I think would come in and go straight into the team. He a bit young, I suppose he's 20, 21 years old, but he plays on the right on Nottingham Forest's attack and is right footed. Got 10 goals this season in the Championship, lightning fast, and he just looks unbelievable. Whenever, whenever I watch Forest, him and Spence, like I said about James Garner in the previous video, James Garner stands out for me as well as Spence and Johnson. But the difference with Johnson is that um, reports are that we've had scouts at recent Nottingham Forest games to watch him in particular. We've not really got those reports for Lewis Potter of Hull City. So that's the interesting sort of twist, if you like. I don't think Johnson will be any cheaper than what Hull are demanding for Lewis Potter. I think you'd be looking at £20 million for him. But I'm just a bit more confident he's got what it takes. Speaking of Welsh, um, he, he's, sort of, he's in the squad now. He's in the Wales squad. Didn't start against Austria. Mind blind there. Didn't start against Austria. But you, you do watch Dan James playing for Wales, gets in these really good positions, but wastes a couple as well. And Johnson did come on and missed a really good chance at the end himself. Wasn't as easy as the Dan James ones. But oh, I wouldn't mind him at West Ham. Whenever I watch Forrest, there's a few there's a couple of players there you just think, would not mind seeing him at West Ham United. Johnson definitely won. Now, there are a couple of players we've been linked to. You know who these are. We've been linked to them in the past. One of them is Lille Seven Botman. Linked to him quite a bit. Newcastle. We're sort of desperately trying to sign him in the January transfer window. 22 years of age, another left-sided centre-back here. But it's expected that he is going to leave Lille this summer, along with Jonathan David. I'm not too sure it'll be West Ham. I think the, the fee for him, you're looking at north of £35 million. I think you're looking at 35 40 45 million to get him in. And I think there's... Other, there's too many clubs interested. I think a bidding war will kick off for him in the summer, and I'm just not too sure that we are going to be able to afford it. So, so while we're linked to Botman, I can't see it. Too expensive for West Ham. We're also being linked to Darwin Nunes again. We know, all, I say we know all about him. I admittedly I didn't really know of him until we were linked to him in the January transfer window. Uh, Benfica striker Darwin Nunes, the West Ham and Nunes link just ain't going away. We're linked to him. Again, and that's it today. That's it. It's say short, it's 12 minutes. We're trying to keep it short and sweet for this one. It's international break. I know transfer rumors shouldn't be a thing. But anyway, coming up tomorrow, we've got a tier list. Ranking. Every David Moyes signing at West Ham. I've done it. I've sent it to Charlie. He's, reco- he's editing it, making it look good for me. That's going up tomorrow night. And on Monday, two years ago, I, um, I collaborated with somebody to make up a transfer rumour in regards to West Ham United. I never covered it on this channel. I didn't want to cheat or anything like that. I didn't cover it. But what we did was we tracked it. I didn't put as much effort into it as I should have done. Uh, for some reason, when I did, when we put the rumour out there, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought. I, 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 was look, I think I enjoyed the idea of trying to trick Sky Sports more than once it got underway. But that was the intention. We set up the fake rumour, see how far it could go. With the aim of getting it mentioned on Sky Sports. Could we make up a transfer rumour and get it on Sky Sports? So on Monday, that video will be up. And on Tuesday, if everything goes well on Monday, and we've got quite a big guest on the channel for Tuesday evening. And then uh, we'll be looking ahead to the Everton game. So there you go, your last transfer rumours. Don't worry, we've got plenty of matches coming up to keep me busy. But So Pink Boot's going away for a few weeks. If you enjoyed this transfer rumour show, do drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Hope you're all enjoying the sunshine.